give this a little run. This is obvious now a great test, especially a little 3 8 bit. Well, at least you can hear how it runs. And it actually is not too bad. I mean, that's just for starting a hole on slow. Pretty dramatic difference. When it's on high, this thing is really pretty excited. I mean, I mean, it's stronger than the Harbor Freight Bower, pushing 0.3 pounds energy more. I think being about 20 bucks cheaper. Okay, Addis Maximus here, this time with a little review of the Viver. They call this the one and a quarter inch SDS Plus rotary hammer. This one's actually a three mode where it has a drill only, hammer only, or rotary hammer. Bigger rotary hammers tend to not do the drill only mode, particularly in SDS Max. It's a really rare feature. So at these, what they call drop motor style or angle motors, but drop motor is the more proper term I finally learned or about the biggest of the small shank SDS Plus 10 millimeter rotary hammer bits. This one does come with the standard fare. Bull nose, a chisel, a little wrench for the gearbox, or for the hammer case specifically. Three bits, this being the larger one, this thing comes with uh, an eight, a 10, and a 12, where the smaller rotary hammers come with a six, eight, and 10. We do have a couple of stop rods here, and it is a spring-loaded mechanism. What they have here is a dust catch that it also comes with. Now, these dust catches uh, is exactly what it sounds like. It's not a vacuum attachment. We have two of them. One of them is this little one, and these you typically put on, put the bit through it, and then you put the bit into the chuck. Now, these can help. Uh, just in general, I actually don't mind them including these because if you, the idea is if you're against or down into a surface, that the dust will kind of collect in this little valley gully here. But just for general use, if you're tearing up tile and stuff, all it does is, or what it can do is help prevent more, you know, helps provide a little more protection for the actual chuck adapter itself and helps it last a little bit longer. Don't forget the grease, the shanks. That's why they come with this grease. This grease tube is not for putting in the gearbox, although you could. It's for putting on the shanks so that the splines don't wear out when you're running. This is just a larger version where it has a, just a deeper cut and a little cup for a deeper cup. And a rubber seal. But this just happens to cover the end of the tool a little bit better. I guess they can help, but they are definitely kind of a funky apparatus. But this thing is okay. So anyway, I, since Beaver's offered to send me these promo rotary hammers, I've been taking them just to build up a collection of rotary hammers. And Beaver has, well, they have a few, but as far as corded, they have four models. The, and I've reviewed the three larger ones. Two, a big SDS, a small, or a big SDS Max, a small SDS Max, a big SDS Plus, and then a pistol grip SDS Plus. Now, even though the pistol grip ones, even like Bosch Bulldogs, they advertise one inch maximum capacity, but once you start getting up to larger bits, they take more energy to drive, so it's actually disproportionate when you're at near the capacity of a particular size of rotary hammer. It really starts to slow down because this is a 7 8 bit by, well, 6 inches of actual flute. This has a lot more mass. This is a 3 8 with 4 inches of flute, and I mean, and this bit weighs 5 times as much. It's going to take 5 times as much kinetic energy to hit this to get this to drive in with the same amount of force that you can concentrate on a little 3 8 So that's the purpose of these larger drop motor SDS Plus hammers is just for bigger chipping jobs when you are using bits, you know, the larger of the SDS Plus bits. You know, this mass is just sucking up kinetic energy of the hammer, so you really need to get much bigger hammers because 
at certain size bits, they uh, or once you get up to the the biggest and the heaviest, it just is sucking up all the power of the machine, just trying to get the bit to accelerate, overcoming its momentum rather than delivering you know real kinetic energy. And it's dynamic. That's as far as I know. This it's one of the more complicated to- topics, surprisingly enough, when it comes to rotary hammers. But as far as I understand it, this is a three joule machine. This is a 5.5 joule machine. So this is going to deliver 2.2 foot-pounds of torque. This is going to deliver about 4 foot-pounds of torque. Even though it's less than twice as much kinetic energy, less than twice as powerful, when you come to the high mass bits, it will still drill more than twice as fast because it's able to deliver more energy to the work rather than just overcoming momentum of the bit. Anyway, for the price, these don't have to do a lot of work. This is a more modern one, so this this is Reaver's revised version. Uh, if you look around on YouTube, uh, it seems that Reaver actually has learned the lessons of like tack life and those other kind of what you would think were fly by night or, or many are fly by night Chinese companies. Reaver actually, it seems, doesn't actually want to end up that way. They sent out an awful lot of tools to an awful lot of people. Um, building up too much brand reputation and it's kind of showing because now we're on to next generation tools so the earlier weavers were there are more plain you know the common chinese drop motor uh rotary hammers but this one has a uh, and you kind of know them by uh, this switch here and it's because from an engineering standpoint it's cheaper for them to have a separate hammer disconnect and ro- rotation disconnect than it is to try to put the wheel here and have the additional mechanics that for one wheel to be able to work the clutches. The way these work is they have a motor up the middle and there's a gear here. That's why the center line of the crankshaft is not in the center line of the motor. There's a motor and then the reduction gear that runs the hammering crankshaft and then there's a second gear. So the motor is actually spinning two gears at once and the second gear is a bevel gear that connects to this collar which gives you the rotation and it's just simpler for them to have one switch which engages and disengages either here or here the clutch for rotation and then a second one which just disengages the hammer so technically it's a five mode and they're underselling themselves right because we do have of course rotary hammer it does have a twist lock function the whole point to this there's not a quick insert, surprisingly enough. Come on. Certainly is tight. I was reading a couple comments of complaining about the tightness of the of uh, the whole spindle system here, and I think part of that is if you're using you know this is a thing it's a DeWalt or it's a Bosch. it's a Germany made bit, either way. I think it's a Bosch actually. So it's really good tolerances on that, and it barely fit in there. And if I wiggle this large bit, that's actually really tight. Rotary, do the ham, nature of rotary hammers, you do get grit in there. You have this bit that's hammering back and forth thousands of times a minute. The chucks just wall out. It's just part of the nature of a rotary hammer. And actually, once they start to loosen up like that, uh, is when they really start delivering their energy. Once the O-rings inside the piston and everything kind of wear in a little bit, rotary hammers actually take uh, tens of hours. It's been well known for a long time, especially the commercial guys working with the Boshes and the Hilties know that you have a brand new one, after you get 10, 20, 30 hours on it, everything kind of seats in and you, you get like a 10 or 15% performance boost just because now the hammer is able to step slam with absolutely as low a friction as possible there's lower friction because of a little bit of extra play in the chuck so it delivers it through the bit (laughs) anyway i digress we have the rotation mode so it's if you have a chisel in there you can set it at a particular angle and then it will lock in the place and once you have it forward then we of course have our rotation mode or excuse me, our hammer only mode, but a unique aspect of this is the fact that it's a separate switch for disengaging the hammer. So this is actually a special extra low productivity mode. 
if you had a really late night and you just need to fool the boss, you just go ahead and engage the hammer disconnect and the rotation disconnect. And that way, you know, the tool's running. Sounds like you're doing work, but you're actually not getting anything done. So it's a unique aspect of these rotary hammers is the all disconnect, low productivity mode. Other than that, uh, they are spring-loaded clutches, so when you re-engage them, you kind of hear them click into place. And once again, being the more modern one, we do have our variable speed. They're advertising this at 1,500 watts, and it's a screamer. Uh, it's one of the things that Chinese have, started to, uh, have learned is they're just putting in bigger and more powerful motors, and that's how they're making these tools one more competitive, but it's a little bit worrisome because that's a lot of power um, through a midsize, eh, 12 pound or so rotary hammer. So anyway, the old ones had, this is still a cast aluminum gearbox, but on this newer generation, what they've done is put in uh, a double layer or a, just a clamshell over that gearbox and it makes it just a lot more durable. And we know that here's the provisions for the screws that hold on the spindle section. There's provisions for the screws that hold on the motor housing to that gearbox. And so what this is doing is a couple things. One, the screws, these, this plastic buildup here is actually excessive because it's to be flush with this clamshell. But the screw actually sits way down here. So there's actually a lot of extra material here because, of course, that's what wears out the most is... It's laying it on this side because it's on concrete it's just getting ground down and of course the surface of the switch looks like they got quite a bit of material there on that switch and then of course the clamshell just helps generally protect it from getting banged up and should add a little bit to the reliability the second thing is actual true anti-vibration and not just on one side of the handle pretty stout springs but we can see anti-vibe there and And it's actually balanced. The springs up here are stronger than the springs down there because, of course, you're mainly holding up here, so they want the stronger springs where you're, they're going to have to take care of, deal with harder hits, and then a little bit softer on the lower portion uh, to deal with the lighter vibrations. So it is modernized. It's kind of funny. They have a little icon for service at the fur to let you know that the brushes are under there. And yes, this did come with a set of brushes. It's kind of interesting, it, it, out of, and I think a lot of my viewers can concur, it's an odd, I guess, I wouldn't call it a trademark, but maybe it is, it is a trademark of Chinese tools that they, almost by clockwork, even the Harbor Freight stuff, just so many of these companies, um, include spare brushes. I mean, there are, I mean, the idea is you'll get enough life out of it that at least need to replace the brushes once. So for the price of this thing, you do get a 90-day warranty out of uh, Harbor Freight's Bauer, but this, surprisingly enough, I mean, Beaver seems to be slowly improving on their uh, dealing with their warranty. They've had enough complaints about people having warranty difficulties that they even issued a Beaver issued a response to the Better Business Bureau committing to. Uh, having better service. So I was actually, that was pretty recent, so I was surprised to see that. Once again, I do appreciate them sending me these uh, promo tools to review. It's always, always handy for me. I don't really have the funds just to buy these to try these out, but it is, uh, but to get them as a promo is an awesome part of basically having all you viewers on YouTube. So I appreciate all you watching as well. Oh, before I forget, like the Bowers, they just come with these really cheesy, low, uh, I mean, I hate to say it, the cases are, they're more like glorified shipping containers. The real reason I say that is because if they don't have actual hinges, when they use this little film or diaphragm, I mean, they mold both the caves, case halves, and then it's just this thin area of plastic, and if people who are familiar with these, it doesn't take long for that plastic to fatigue and break down. I mean, it's a rotary hammer, and the thing weighs over 10 pounds. 
So you're dragging this across the concrete, it abrades this little thing, and you can see I can push it in. It's not very thick. And I just had so many times where I picked up a tool and just had the bottom of the case just split open and dump everything out. Uh, so that's the one big gripe that they could improve is just a little bit of extra money, a tiny amount, to give it a couple actual real hinges, just like the big tool manufacturers do because they've learned that that's what it takes to have a case that lasts more than a month. I don't mind this case. For what the accessories that it comes with, it is designed for it. It holds three bits up in the top, holds the chisel and bull nose down here, and it actually has a provision for one of those SDS Plus to three jaw chuck adapters. The big SDS Max rotary hammers came in just really large cases that had a whole bunch of extra space in them. And I didn't keep them because they were like twice as big as what the tool was. So I'll give them credit for this case. Because at least it has just the provisions, the whole basic bits and stuff. Secondly, they did improve all the steel was actually shipped in this little plastic container rather than just being kind of wrapped up, which helps prevent them from getting loose and beating up the tool during shipping. And it's just a little bit more efficient with the space. It's just the unfortunate aspect of this case is um, for a homeowner, it will last okay. Obviously, you can spend some time to put your own hinges on it. But for me, it just doesn't make quite enough sense. Mainly because I have a separate bucket that I use, or container <laughs> that I use for whatever bits, whether the rotary hammer or just regular twist drills, etc., that I may need for the job, and then I just like bringing the tool. Cases do help tools last longer, just by basically helping them prevent them from getting too dinged up. But in this case, when I know they're not really built to truly last, uh, I tend to just recycle them. So there's my review of the Viver drop motor, one and a quarter inch capacity, their high power SDS plus rotary hammer, and it really. You know, for the more modernized units, it's not bad, especially with five and a half joules of energy or four foot pounds of energy. It actually has a decent amount of power. It's just loud, and that motor screams. They put such a powerful motor in there. And it's, I don't know if I mentioned, rotates to 950 RPM. We tend to, the inline ones tend to be around 1300, so it's geared down a little bit more for the size of bits you'll be using and when if you're doing things like breaking up tile and brickwork and all that kind of stuff um, and you're using one of the smaller inline rotary hammers those things sometimes it's just like you're tickling the material sometimes they work pretty well it just depends on them, what you're doing and how hard it's stuck but a lot of times just a little bit of extra mass in a hammer like this and you can make a lot more progress for very little extra money anyway Thanks for watching. See you next time.